Alright guys, so picking up where we left off, um, in example 2, our friend the surveyor from example 1 is doing some further work, he's already found the distance between points A and B, now he wants to locate point D that is equidistant from both A and B, so what he wants to do is he wants to find an isosceles triangle across the river, and on the same side of the river is A. He has his assistant mark the point D, so that angle ABD and angle BAD both measure 75 degrees. Now guys, <clears throat> I know this looks like a pretty bad isosceles triangle, but bear with me here. What's the distance from D to A to the nearest meter? So what we're going to do is we're going to come back up here. We found A to B, right? Let's go back all the way up here in example 1. So the distance from A to B that we saw was 132 meters right here. So we're going to scroll back down. I'm going to write in 132. Now, we just need to find that other angle, which is pretty simple. 75 plus 75 is 150. 180 minus 150 gets us 30. Now, we're trying to find the distance from D to A to the nearest meter. So we're going to call this Z. Now, we just need to set up exactly what we set up before. We're going to go 132 divided by the sine of 30 is equal to z divided by the sine of 75. That's a 7, guys, trust me. Now to solve for z, we just multiply both sides by the sine of 75. And we get 132 sine of 75 divided by the sine of 30 is equal to z. Now, we don't know this off the top of our heads, and I don't even want to pretend like I know it off the top of my head. We're going to come back over here to symbol lab. And we're going to type in our problem. So 132, actually, first let's make our fraction. 132 times the sine of 75 divided by the sine of 30. Hit enter. And we get it's roughly 255 meters. So we come back over to the notebook. And we get that 255 meters is going to be equal to Z. And it's as simple as that, guys. And if we wanted to find this side over here, let's call it Y. Well, we know this is an isosceles triangle, so Z and Y are going to be equal. So example th or exercise three, we have parallelogram ABCD has side lengths of 44 millimeters and 26 millimeters, and it shows us where those are respectively. So AD is 44, DC is 26, and one of the angles has a measure of 100 degrees. We need to approximate the length of this diagonal to the nearest millimeter. So this right here is going to be 80 because we know that in a parallelogram, these two sides have to add up to 180 degrees. Now, to find the length of the diagonal, we need to know one of those two angle measures. All right. So we need to find that in order to find AC, which we're going to call X. So here comes the hard part, guys, is trying to figure out what that angle measure is, because we simply don't know. We really don't know. So I'm going to say let's just assume what it is, all right, because there's no way we can actually find that, and it says to approximate. So I'm going to say that this angle right here looks like it's probably, let's say, a 70 degree angle. Yeah, let's call this a 70, and we'll call this a 30. All right, so then all we have to do is say that 26 divided by the sine of 30 is equal to 44 divided by the sine of of 70 is equal to x divided by the sine of 80. 
Now let's go with the 26 on the sine of 30 because that's super simple. So we're going to get 26 divided by the sine of 30 is equal to x over the sine of 80. Now let's multiply both sides by the sine of 80 and we're going to get 26 sine 80 divided by sine 30 is equal to x. And guys, as I'm working through this, I just figured out there's a really easy way to figure out what those two angles are. <sighs> I really messed this up. Okay. Alright, we're just going to keep rolling with this. Um, so now, we just plug this into our calculator, and it will give us the answer for x. So, we're going to say, shoot, what was it? 26 sine 80. Make a fraction 26 times the sine of 80 divided by the sine of 30. Hit enter. Which gives us 51.21. So we're going to say that x is equal to 51.21 millimeters. So, come back down here. This is the problem set. This is what you guys need to be able to do. So given this triangle right here, we need to calculate the measure of angle B and use the law of sines to find the length of AC and BC. Well, angle B has to be that, if we add those together, that's going to be 135.6, which puts this at 44.4. So, angle B is 44.4 degrees. Now, to find AC, let's call this X, we'll call this... Y. So then we're going to get that X over the sine of 44.4 is equal to Y over the sine of 57.2 is equal to 14 over the sine of 78.4. So we're going to take this one step at a time. Let's start with x. So then we're going to get, if we multiply both sides by the sine of 44.4, x is going to be equal to 14 sine of 44.4 divided by the sine of 78.4. Now we'll go back to the calculator. And we type in 14, oops, type in our fraction first. 14 times the sine of 44.4 divided by the sine of, oops, I didn't put it under there, divided by the sine of 78.6, was it 78.6? I feel like I'm off. 78.4. We hit enter. And we're going to get approximately 10 feet, or 10 whatever the units are. Um, so then we're going to say x is equal to 9.9. .9. Actually, that's not the most accurate. We're going to call it 10, because rounding up would be most accurate there. So x equals 10. So then to solve for y we're going to get that y is equal to 14 sine of 57.2 divided by the sine of 78.4. And again, all we need to do in our calculator is come back over here and change this top number to... Oh, I keep forgetting what the angle measure is. 52.2. 57.2. Can't even read my own handwriting. 57.2. 
which is 12.01, which we're going to round to the nearest tenth as 12. Now, in order to solve this, to find it to the nearest, or to find the area to the nearest square unit, we're just going to drop down a, an altitude, so a perpendicular line right here. And we'll call this H. So let's use, let's use this 57.2 and this 10. So what we're going to do is the area is usually equal to base times height divided by 2. Okay, so our height here, we're going to change this because our height is going to be the sine of 57.2 times this x, right? Because that's how we find our height. So the sine of 57.2 is equal to our height divided by our hypotenuse of x, which is 10. Which means our h is equal to 10 sine of 57.2. So let's plug that in. So area is equal to 14 times 10 sine of 57.2 divided by 2. So let's plug this into our calculator. So we're going to come back over here. We're going to type in fraction 14 times 10 times the sine of 57.2 divided by 2. And then hit enter. So from here, we can see that it is 58.839, and it said to round it to the nearest whole square unit. So we're going to go with 59. So the area is 59 units squared. And we don't know what those units are, so we're just going to say units squared. Now, hopefully this is bringing up what you guys remember about finding the area from using sine and cosine, hopefully. We'll see if you guys remember it. But um, this is an easy way to do this, and I'm going to leave the rest of the exercises for you guys to do. You guys are just using law of sine and cosine to find side lengths, and then from there you guys are finding the area, if it asks you to find the area. I'll be uploading a lot more videos, guys. Don't worry, this is how we're going to do most of the teaching from now on.